Bivers, welcome back to today's session again. So children, of course, we are going ahead with the biological classification and we have covered the introduction, the whole concept related to biological classification. Then we have discussed about the kingdom monirans, the features of kingdom monera, the features of kingdom protesta and we have also discussed their mode of nutrition, their mode of reproduction, etc. And we have also discussed about kingdom fungi yesterday that why what distinguish fungi from the plants as well as the animals and why we have not kept fungi in the monerans as well as the protesta why this unique the unique uh, unique features of the fungi has actually made us or uh, not exactly us but the scientists to keep it in an individual kingdom and yeah i know till now you must have understood how unique features or different characteristics they have other than the monerans and protesta and that is why we have kept them in the different kingdom so yet another session uh, continuing with the fungi because yesterday we have only discussed about the classification or the fungi we have discussed about their mode of nutrition and yet we have also discussed about the basic characteristics and what make fungi not to put in the monerans and protesta and the other organisms okay but today we're going to discuss about the life cycle of course how do they reproduce how they are so much present everywhere why they are cosmopolitan why they are present everywhere in the moist in the soil in the air everywhere okay so children their capab capability their uh, i would say capacity to reproduce in any environment is technically make them present everywhere so just imagine you keeping a bread on the fridge in the fridge and then it is also infected and they also catch fungus okay so now you know how omnipresent they are they're typically omnipresent okay so children talking about how the fungi reproduce let's start our today's session but before we start let me introduce you to myself i am anam khan i'll be your botany expert for the session 2023 and 2024 and we're going to discuss all the amazing and interesting topics related to botany okay so let's start our today's session how fungi reproduce yes of course we want to know but all the topics which have been already covered related to and will be covered are present over here we have discussed about the different classification system given by different scientists and yet we also have discussed about their drawbacks and their features and we have also discussed about kingdom monera yet we have also discussed about kingdom protesta now we are still stuck on the kingdom fungi then we going to start about the kingdom plantae your zoology ma'am going to discuss about the kingdom animalia and yet we going to also discuss about virus viroids and prions okay moving forward with our topic today which is the kingdom fungi whatever we going to discuss about here it is we going to discuss about the sexual reproduction in fungi which basically constitute towards the plasmogamy which is taking place in fungi the karyogamy which is happening in fungi the zoospore formation the ascospore formation the basidiospore formation and of course the conidias which are basically being formed in fungi all the concepts will be covered in today's session okay so moving forward children talking about the fungi let's have a quick recap from the yesterday session so children talking about the recap you know that the fungi is are classified on the basis of the kind of a structure their mode of nutrition and exactly how the morphology okay so on the basis of that we have divided into zygomycetes ascomycetes basidiomycetes and deutero mycetes the deutromycetes are being called as fungi imperfectae because they do not have sex organs and they do not show the sexual reproduction talking about the zygomycetes the sexual spores are known as zygospores while the asexual spores are known as sporangiospores we have discussed about the ascomycetes which is also known as sac fungi and talking about the basidiomycetes basidiophycetes or basically the fungi which falls into the category of mushrooms so mushrooms which are edible or even also poisonous falls into the category of basidiomycetes okay moving forward talking about the fungi reproduction children the reproduction talking about the reproduction in fungi children after vegetative maturity the fungus enters into the reproductive phase what is vegetative uh, 
maturity it means it has fully grown up it is ready to reproduce and produce spores or basically show the whole sexual reproduction they started to produce they enter into the reproductive phase of course in each and every organism there always are reproductive phase in which is fully mature fully grown up to reproduce and they that phase is what you called as reproductive phase only the unicellular yeast or the unicellular fungi which is existing which is called yeast same cell perform but both reproductive and vegetative function which is holocarpic it means since it is typically unicellular okay single cell organism there is only one cell which is performing the vegetative reproduction also and also basically performing the whole functions okay so basically since it is only unicellular so one single cell will be performing all the function and that is also known as holocarpic okay a single cell performing all the functions especially with related to the reproduction okay if a part of mycelium you know what is mycelium a network of hyphae is called mycelium is used for the formation of reproductive structure and such body is known as eucarpic if there is a multicellular fungi and there is a mycelium which is a network of hyphae they reproduce and they produce certain structures which are helping in the reproduction then that fungi body is called as eucarpic okay because there is a specialized features they have for the reproduction and yet there are three types of reproduction taking place in fungi which is the vegetative reproduction asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction they are showing all three of them and of course the most prominent one is always the the sexual one okay himanshi what you want me to explain again which part children or which point you want me to explain again so since we are only introducing to the reproduction in fungi these are the few features of fungi talking about the holocarpic and eucarpic so the basic difference between holocarpic and eucarpic is that in the holocarpic a single cell which is a unicellular fungi which is called yeast is performing the reproduction and it is also responsible for all the cellular activities okay because it is only single cell and that is why we calling them as holocarpic but talking about the advanced fungi which is multicellular because major all the fungi are multicellular except the yeast okay so when there is a multicellular fungi they basically have this mycelium which is a network of filamentous hyphae they create their own reproductive structures for the reproduction and that is why they called as eucarpic is it clear himanshi now is it clear now is it clear now is it clear now okay so this is the basic introduction towards the fungi okay so moving forward to our next point talking about further of the reproduction we have the very first which is re vegetative reproduction children the term is very clear vegetative reproduction it means it's neither asexual or sexual it only dependent on the parts of the particular organisms which are reproducing or creating a new individual so what are the basis of reproduction or the vegetative reproduction in the fungi so talking about the vegetative reproduction children the vegetative reproduction involves the budding fission and fragmentation okay what is fission you know fission children talked about that in the bacteria fission in which vegetative cell divides into two daughter cells binary fission okay multiple fission there are different types of fission taking place in the one single cell is particularly dividing into two daughter cells okay the next which is also very common which is the fragmentation a body divides into different fragments and each fragments is converted or grow into a new individual simple a mycelium which is a network of hyphae breaks down and into two or more fragments and each fragments forms a new mycelium this is what fragmentation is what is fragmentation 
a network of hyphae which is called mycelium breaks down into two or more fragments and each fragments have its own individual mycelium okay next talking about the budding the small outgrowth forms on the parent body and then cut off to form a new organisms yes small outgrowth which is formed around the human uh, parent body budding a bud is formed just an extension outgrowth on the parent body and then it cut off from the new organism just cut down falls on the ground and the new organism is basically created you know these are the basic methods of vegetative reproduction applies to every other organism also which undergo the vegetative reproduction even the plants also even the plants also they show us the vegetative reproduction okay so children talking about the let's see how it is done let's see how that see the fragmentation the typically growing into two parts and this is how the budding is done again once i'm in again i'm playing can you see this outgrowth small outgrowth detached from the parent body grow into an individual organism or the fungi so this is how they are being basically what they are doing they are creating a new organisms okay moving forward children next we have the method of asexual reproduction so children when we talk about the asexual reproduction it is very clear it means it does not involve it does not involve fusion of gametes yes there is no fusion of gametes when we talk about the asexual reproduction talking about the asexual reproduction which occurs through the spores like mitospores zoospores sporangiospores chlamydospores conidiospores and udia all the spore formation will individually give rise to a new hyphae a network of hyphae which is mycelium and finally the new fungi will be formed these spore germination which is being done by the all the spore formation method in the fungi will give rise to a new organism that is the method of asexual reproduction because each and every fungi which undergoes the process of asexual reproduction they create spores they create spores in their body and these spores eventually germinate to form a new mycelium or a new organism or a new fungi okay these are single cell structure which detach from the organisms and produce new mycelium under favorable condition this is what i told you these spores are produced by the body and when these proceeds when the time comes these production is there this production is there and this each spore basically develops into a new mycelium under the favorable condition they do not germinate in the unfavorable condition because the survival ch chances gets low so during the favorable condition they grow they grow into a new individual or a new mycelium okay so this is about the asexual reproduction clear i just hope we are clear with the what is vegetative reproduction and what is asexual reproduction yes or no is it clear children so i think the these are the only basic methods how the organism reproduce this is common to every particular organ living organisms the me these three methods but yet because the more method we going to learn about the sexual method which is unique in the fungi okay so this is the asexual method through the spore formation each spore will be formed from their bodies and these spores will germinate under the favorable condition so this is all about the asexual reproduction next talking about the spores further so children there are different kinds of a spore existing which is the zoospore sporangiospore conidiospores talking about the zoospores children as you can see they has flagella which helps them in the movement there are the sp sporangiophores which basically developing spores inside it and there is a conidia where you can see the exogenous formation of spore exogenous means outside the cell this is endogenous this is endogenous and this is exogenous this is exogenous talking about the zoospore many fungi mainly the aquatic one 
members contain zoospore because it can uniflagellate have biflagellate yes very simple concept why the aquatic fungi has zoospores because it has flagella it can move it can move from one place to another because it is motile okay so wherever it wants to germinate they it can germinate okay and it has flagella it is biflagellated so children due to the flagella the fungi can basically germinate and the zoospores are mainly present in the aquatic fungi talking about these sporangiospores these are non flagellated spores that develop inside which is endogenously the sporangium called mucor so children this is what i have told you in the starting only this is endogenous the sporangiospores produces spore inside the body inside it the spores are developed inside this particular sporangiophores and when we talk about the conidia these are exogenous non motile and which are at the tip of the hyphae example aspergillus so mucor mucor and the aspergillus are the example respectively the mucor is growing formation of the spore is exo endogenously and when it is endogenously it is basically inside the spores just a sec so talking about the sporangiospore which develops spore endogenously and conidiospores which develop spores exogenously both have their own importance and yet they give rise to spore and these spores germinate under the favorable conditions okay clear clear so now moving forward towards the next which is the chlamydospores oridia so children these are also the spores which are formed during the asexual reproduction talking about the chlamydophores can you see this basically this and this is oudia formation okay so children talking about the chlamydospores these are thick walled pre, pe, uh, parenting spores which form under unfavorable condition so chlamydospores are the spores which are absolutely thick walled and during the unfavorable condition they are formed and when the unfavorable conditions are gone and situation is in the favor they tend to germinate why they are creating a thick wall around him the reason they are creating a thick wall so that they can be protected during the unfavorable conditions okay next which is the udia there is also the non motile spores formed under high sugar high water and few salt conditions example the rhizopus so basically the non motile spores which are formed under extremely high sugar condition of water and the few salt they are also can be formed in little bit on the marine side also i would say some situation which is little bit containing the salt they can be present in that yet the example would be the rhizopus so each and every spores be it zoospores sporangiospores oudia chlamydospores all these spores have their unique ability to germinate and to be formed on the respective fungi and basically they having these thick layers covering around them which led them to survive under unfavorable condition so yes asexual reproduction is generally more favorable because it's just a spore formation there are no fusion of gametes so that is why when you keep anything outside or leave outside for some time and there's a temperature moisture content is there the air contains the spores because your food gets the food is basically gets fungus your bread gets the fungus because the spores are present in the air the reason of that is the spores present in air these are the only spores which are present in the air which gets which basically in the moment they get the food they germinate on it yes or no so yes the ability the capacity of these spores to be in air led to the 
accumulation of fungus or infection of the fungus on the food and of course anywhere required okay moving forward yet we have discussed about the vegetative reproduction and have also discussed about the asexual reproduction moving forward for the next type of reproduction which is the sexual reproduction so children what is sexual reproduction so children talking about the sexual reproduction it includes formation and union of two gametes yes this is the basic characteristic of any sexual reproduction that it requires the formation or the union of two gametes okay to form sexual reproduction homothelic and heterothelic two forms of sexual reproduction is there which is one is homothelic the other is the heterothelic what is the homothelic and what is the heterothelic the word homo is very sim very popular also the when we t use the word term homo which means fusion of gametes which are genetically similar homo iso same so when we call it homothelic the fusion of gametes which are absolutely similar and when we talk about the heterothelic the fusion of gametes which are genetically different yes homothelic and heterothelic homothelic similar gametes heterothelic dissimilar gametes in the terms of genetics in the terms of genetic or the i would say the content the genetic content it's different that is why we call them as heterothelic and when the genetic uh, content is similar we call it as homothelic so children the whole life cycle or i would say the sexual phase of the fungi includes three steps what are these three steps one is the plasmogamy the other is the karyogamy and the other is the meiosis plasmogamy means fusion of the protoplasm next karyogamy fusion of the nucleus and then there is a reductional division which is called meiosis which is called meiosis okay the stage between plasmogamy and karyogamy is dikaryon phase which contains two nuclei of course the phase between the plasmogamy and the karyogamy is a phase where there is a two nucleated stage and we also call it as dikaryon stage two nucleated stage or dikaryotic stage three stages occur which is haplophase dikaryose phase and diplophase so children there are two three phases in which the sexual reproduction is taking place haploid phase diploid phase okay it means the haplophase the dikaryose phase and finally the diplophase okay so children talking about the sexual reproduction these are the few things which are involved in the sexual reproduction homothelic heterothelic homothelic means genetically similar gametes heterothelic means genetically dissimilar gametes talking about the three stages the first stage is the plasmogamy the other is the karyogamy and the last would be the meiosis okay the phase between the plasmogamy and karyogamy is called dikaryotic phase because it is a two nucleated stage okay okay and these three stages which is called the haplophase the dikaryophase dikaryon means two nucleated phase and finally the diplophase okay these are the three phases taking place in the in the sexual reproduction as you can children see this i don't know whether why this is little blur so children as you can see i can write it down for you do not worry talking about this so haplophase which is n heterokaryon diploid the spores this is how spore basically germinate asexual reproduction germination is there mycelium is formed and when we talk about the sexual reproduction it means there is a phase called spores germination mycelium will be formed after the mycelium fusion of fusion of cytoplasm fusion of protoplasm whatever you can say then there is a heterokaryotic stage which means two different kind of genes are basically fusing finally there is a karyogamy fusion of nuclei when there is a fusion of nuclei zygote is formed and the zygote will undergo reductional division and again will form spores so the ultimate aim is to form these spores children simple 
in the sexual reproduction also in the asexual reproduction also what we want we want to create spores because these spores will give rise to the mycelium these spores will give rise to hyphae then hyphae will basically divide to form a fun network of hyphae which is called the mycelium yes because these are the three different phases basically possible and that is why this is called as the sexual reproduction the ultimate aim after the fusion also there is a reductional division there is a meiosis taking place to form the spores clear this is the introduction let's we're going to talk about each and every stage further do not worry but at least i hope these basic characteristics of the sexual reproduction is clear yes i hope these basic characteristics of the sexual reproduction is clear clear children okay so moving forward children next we have the plasmogamy so what is plasmogamy ma'am you kept on saying about the plasmogamy which is the first stage of the sexual reproduction talking about the plasmogamy fusion of protoplasm this is what i said in the very first place that the fusion of protoplasm is called plasmogamy where the male and the female gametes are known as plasmogamy when the female and the female gametes fuse or the fusion of the protoplasm of the male and female gametes is this, it is known as the plasmogamy okay so then the plasmogamy can occur in various methods the methods of plasmogamy to take place could be fusion of two gametes of opposite strains fusion of can be isogamy and isogamy and oogamy here one or both of the gametes are motile it means they can be an isogamy similar but different strains plus minus strain they could be an isogamy one is bigger the one other is shorter it could be morphologically morphologically different different okay this is isogamy means morphologically morphologically similar morphologically similar okay and the other one is oogamy in which the one person is absolutely i would say stagnant okay and the other gamete which is the male gamete is motile so what is the difference between an isogamy isogamy and oogamy in the isogamy two morphologically similar gametes are fusing an isogamy morphologically dissimilar gametes are fusing and the oogamy in which one gamete is motile which is the male gamete and the other x cell or the female gamete is totally stagnant or basically at one place only so these are the few types of plasmogamy taking place in the first phase of sexual reproduction the oogamy plasmogamy sorry the anisogamy the isogamy and of course the oogamy these are three different types of plasmogamy taking place inside the sexual reproduction of fungi i hope this is clear children what is the difference between isogamy and isogamy and oogamy okay they are not genetically dissimilar children do not confuse with it they are not genetically different from each other okay just they are opposite in the form of morphology okay next moving for forward talking about the gametangle contact what is the gametangle contact it means when the two gametes are coming in contact with each other of course okay what kind of a organism they going to form basically make maybe homothelic baby heterothelic that doesn't matter that's a the whole different thing but when we talk about the gametangle contact both gametangia come together with each and fuse directly okay talking about the gametangle contact the gametangia comes in contact with each other and fuse directly the male gametangium contact with and get transfer to the female gametangium with the help of a fertilization tube so in the whole fusion there is also gametangle contact in the male and the female gametes come in periphery of each other they form a fertilization tube and the male gamete basically 
transfer the female transfer the content to the female gametangium okay so the male gametangium content gets transferred to the female gametangium with the help of fertilization tube let's see how it is being done talking about the gametangial content can you see this this is how the fertilization tube is basically done and this is how the content from the male to the female is being transferred this is a can you see this children let's have a very clear view see this is a male gamete this is a male gamete okay and this is a female gamete okay and this is the fertilization tube this is the fertilization tube okay and this is your female so children when the fertilization tube is being formed it is transferring content from the male gametangium to the female gametangium and this is what you call gametangial contact okay this is what you called gametangial contact a very high piyush i hope you are doing doing good so we have discussed the plasmogamy we have discussed the gametangial contact let's see what we have next in the sexual reproduction is this clear children is this what is gametangial contact clear how the fertilization tube is being formed how they are basically transferring the content is this clear children see children i understand that the biological classification is not as much interesting as it should be but it is not i can't help it i can only here explain you everything in detail so that you have a better conceptual clarity and you can at least re uh, uh, remember it okay i know this is something which you needed to understand and remember a lot okay so it is concept little bit conceptual also and lot to basically remember or grasp it okay so you might find it difficult you might hate the few chapters of botany but you have to bear with it you have to stay with that because these are the important chapter with respect to your neat examination also okay if ever you wanted to give the neat examination you want to be a doctor you have to have to be part of the this diversity chapter this is also very important with respect to the neat examination okay this is easy also at least there is no concept you just have to remember things okay moving forward children next we have the gametangial copulation so talking about the gametangial copulation children both gametangia comes in contact with each other and fuse directly due to the fusion formation of a single cell occur zygospores are produced which is rhizopus so children talking about the gametangial copulation these two spores are basically coming into the contact there will be a fusion there will be a fusion and after the fusion the zygospore is being formed and after the spore is formed it is basically going to germinate and going to form a mycelium okay yes or no so this is how the gametangial copulation takes place the two the two come directly in contact with each other they basically fuse with each other and after the basically copulation what they do i am saying gametangial contact this is not contact this is copulation sorry so the copulation you are talking about it means the fusion of the when they directly come in contact with each other and after they come in contact with each other they fuse and they formed a single cell occur single cell formation occur and which is called zygospore and eventually zygospore germinate to form a mycelium yes sounds very different of course but it is a form of the sexual reproduction gametangial copulation gametangial contact is different gametangial copulation is different and plasmogamy is different but ultimate aim of all of them is to basically led to the fusion of male and the female to let give rise to a spore which eventually germinate to form a new organism okay moving forward talking about more of the sexual reproduction next we have spermatogamy what is spermatogamy children talking about the spermatogamy few fungi produce a spore like structure called spermatia 
What is spermatia? There are few fungi which are producing sperm like structure called spermatia. Sperm like structure, not sperms. Sperm, sperm like structure that is what you call spermatia. It transferred to the female receptive hyphae and various agencies like water, air, insects help in the transfer of spermatia. Example in the rhizopus, this is how the spermatogamy is taking place. What is spermatogamy? So, there are certain fungi which produce a sperm like structure which is called spermatia and these spermatia through the various transfer, transferring agencies uh, what are agencies? The water, air, insects they transfer this spermatia to the female and do when they reaches the female they start the whole fusion and after the fusion of course you know what is being formed the spore is being formed and this type of fusion is being shown by the rhizopus okay which is called spermatogamy because this is what the spermatia is okay and you know children since it does not have a flagella it is not motile and that is why it needs the various agencies to move to the female clear clear this is spermatogamy the next is the somatogamy what is the somatogamy children talking about the somatogamy it is the sex organs are absent yet it is a type of a sexual reproduction but sex organs are absent the fusion of hyphae's occur and this kind of a reproduction is taking place in the agricus what is the somatogamy somatogamy is the fusion of the it is a fusion of the hyphae because the sex organs are absent and when the fusion of hyphae is taking place you can see that they come in contact with each other this is how the somatogamy is taking place let us play it they are coming in contact with each other exchanging material with each other and finally they basically produce reproducing through this okay through the whole fusion of the hyphae okay the hyphaes are basically fusing with each other this is what you call somatogamy next is the karyogamy what is the karyogamy children talking about the karyogamy the fusion of two nuclei is known as karyogamy in some fungi it happens immediately and forms a diploid cells what is karyogamy of course n n fusion it is going to definitely give rise to a 2 n condition okay yes or no a dicaryon I would not say nah, sorry this is not the right thing I should say 2 n condition but the right condition would be the n plus n 2 n will be a diploid condition so this is a dicaryon because the two cells are not basically fusing since only two nucleus are present so this is what you call as a dicaryon condition n plus n is a dicaryon condition okay to make it easier for you which is also basically in some it happens immediately and forms 2 n which is a diploid cell okay 2 n also n plus n also in some fungi dicaryotic stage occur like n plus n this phase is known as dicaryophase okay that is what basically basically whole fusion is taking place forming a 2 n cell and then there is dicaryon phase in which n plus n two nucleated stage is basically there so we always represent two nucleated stage as n plus n okay which is a dicaryon dicaryophase in some of the cells after some time nuclear fuses and form a diploid cell known as karyogamy in these cells after some time the nuclear typically fuses with each other and form a diploid cell until and unless the two nuclei are fusing with each other they will not give rise to a 2 n condition they will form n plus n the when this n plus n only fuses they create a 2 n condition which is a diploid cell can you see this children diploid 2 n 2 n 2 n because they have fused with each other this is how the 2 n condition is done because of the karyogamy the fusion of the whole two nucleus and the last is the meiosis what is the meiosis children the meiosis is the reductional division so every particular fungi has the process has the fruiting bodies which takes place the reductional division or the meiosis occur it leads to the formation of haploid spores and ascospores basidiospores are all example of such spores spores are always haploid so how these spores are formed these spores are formed after the reductional division okay and the basidiospores ascospores are formed by the meiosis only 
the ascocarp contains sci which is a fruiting body and the structure of fungi which is ascomycetes it contains non motile ascospores it contains non motile ascospores diploid nucleus present in each cell after fertilization give rise to spore after meiosis and mitosis the diploid nucleus in each cell after the fertilization give rise to spore after the meiosis and mitosis okay yes the rise of the spores is always possible because of the meiosis because the meiosis is the reductional division the formation of ascospores the formation of basidiospores is possible due to the formation or due to the these fruiting bodies are undergoing the reductional division i know we have discussed a lot about the sexual reproduction in fungi okay i have uh, also discussed the various aspects of the sexual reproduction in fungi okay children so these are the few aspects of the sexual reproduction in fungi talking about next children we have the summary so children this comes to an end of this particular session you know what we have discussed we have discussed the sexual reproduction taking place vegetative reproduction which is taking place asexual reproduction which is taking place in the fungi and the different kind of a reproduction which is taking place what are their formations what are they basically producing and how they are reproducing through various methods okay you know the only sex uh, sexual activity or the sexual reproduction is absent in the deutromycetes and that is why they are called as what the fungi imperfecti the sexual cycle involves three steps the plasmogamy karyogamy and the meiosis the asexual produces spores zoospores ascospores basidiospores conidiospores chlamydospores and the vegetative reproduction records the budding the fragmentation and of course the whole fission so this is all about the reproduction in fungi since it is unique it is different from the other of course that is why we have kept this individual session for how the fungi will reproduce okay but before we go you know the ritual children this is the mi bab children this is the mi bab so this is like you can basically have this one stop solution you can self learn through various forms and as you see you can select the class since you belong to which board you can basically select the board as you can press next you can select 11th cbsc as you press next your select respective language and and when you will land on this page okay as you click on the home page you will basically land on the and clicking on the mi live classes will help you that all the ongoing classes and all the upcoming classes will be scheduled for and the past mi classes will be here okay so we teaching all the experts are there the mathematics the physics the chemistry all the teachers are teaching all in the chapters in the perspective sequences discussing all the important questions having quiz and doubt sessions there so please go and download and sign up on the mbibe app and join us on the mbibe app registers for the class so that you never miss an update related to the class there's an another app which is absolutely i would say interesting that this particular mbibe lens app you just have to download it sign up and just scan the text it will catch all the keywords and will show you all the things in the 3d so have you have a visual learning everything in 3d so go use your physics use your chemistry mathematics i know probably the biology books okay not mathematics biology books scan the text highlights the keyword and basically see everything in 3d and you can also join us on the telegram channel and you can also download us from the app store or the play store we will meet again with the next session will be scheduled on the dashboard register yourself for the class and if you have missed any session children due to any issue please please go and watch the recorded session okay till then please take care keep imbibing bye bye keep imbibing we believe in you